own tools and get started hacking your own proprietary RFID system. Um, there's plenty of them still around. Uh, we will talk about how to sniff data that is exchanged between an RFID tag and its reader, um, with in this case just a sound card and a little loop antenna. We'll then um, help you understand how to interpret these, these signals as bits and bytes, then further along the process, how to interpret these bits and bytes as messages being exchanged and what these messages actually mean. Um, and in case that there are cryptographic, meaning encrypted, some authentication protocol, we'll show you some simple techniques how to, how to break the encryption and how to break the entire system eventually. Um, but first off, let's do a little experiment. Um, how many of you are carrying a car key? Car keys, yes. How many of those cars are, say, less than seven years old? OK, can I have all of you come up here and just quickly swipe your car key over this reader so we can find out how widespread this technology is? Because honestly, we don't even know. We know we can break it. We don't know who's using it. So for, for those of you who, who do come up here, you'll see that Henrik uh, is using a, a commercial RFID reader for this, tech. just for reliability's sake. Um, we could have been doing this with but just a sound card signal. that we'll, we'll be talking about later. It's even worse. OK, interesting. It's not high tech, but uh, this one is not high tech, but it has a data, it sends a data signal, and it's obviously even worse because it doesn't do any challenge response. So we found something other than high tech. So there's definitely the next project idea laying on the table here. <laughs> what was the manufacturer of that? Uh, Volkswagen. Volkswagen is using RFID, but not high tech. OK, it doesn't respond. Um, probably not. Uh, this is keyless? Uh, yeah, it's keyless. You, you don't have a key. There is a key for, there is a key if you want to use it, but you just. And Swipe just a little key. That should have it in it too, right? No. no. Um, how, how do you uh, enable the ignition? You just put this in the dashboard. OK, then it's probably a different protocol. Different protocol. Mm -hmm. Press that button, pick it up. No, no, it's, uh, this is a, a higher range probably to open the door. Okay. That's probably not high tech. Okay. High tech so BMW high -tech. using <laughs> RFID, just not high tech. This is the newer keyless ones. Fancy. That looks yep. good. This is high tech. This is yes. a this is a car key. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is Renault. Yeah. I take it. Okay, Renault. Yeah. Um, I don't tell you where it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we you we are not we are not it. recording any data here. Just for oh. for the record, um, <laughs> all we are seeing is what's up on the screen here. We're not taking any logs. I saw something just a moment ago. Yeah. The LED doesn't light up, uh, but uh, probably they are probably using the encryption. Um, the reader doesn't know the key to the key, but okay. it's responding and it gives us uh, its UID. Okay. Okay, this is uh, another one of the bad ones. You see there's a data signal yeah. that is uh, uh, there regardless of whether the reader sends an inquiry or not. You just have to put that next to a, a RF uh, a source and it will respond. So that is what then? Um, you, that, that's... Uh, Zayat, yeah. yeah. You can replay things, for example, with an iPod. That's what I did at the CC Congress uh, three years ago. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah, this is so, uh, so we are noting Zeat, a subsidiary of Volkswagen, uses a different technology mm -hmm. than Volkswagen, mm -hmm. one that doesn't even mm -hmm. use encryption, just for the record. Okay, another high-tech one. What, what manufacturer is that? Opel. Opel. Opel, oh. It's also using the As encryption. As if they don't have enough problems already. <laughs> it's also using the encryption, so it... Uh, Opel is, is a subsidiary of General Motors, so chances are General Motors uses those two then. Okay, this one doesn't respond at all. Not high tech. 
I guess. What was that? Mercedes? Mercedes not using it? Not. Henrik? Not using. But something else in it, right? No. OK, this one doesn't respond either. Okay. It's a Ford? It's a, it's, it's a door key. Ford, <laughs> yes or no? Door or five no. 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 Well, Ford is using a Texas Instruments chip. That was hacked about five years ago. <laughs> OK, it doesn't respond. Could, could I ask, could we ask that while, while they're doing this, could we, the audience please keep the, not the sound level uh, down uh, so okay. that we get a good okay. recording oh, of the talk, please? <laughs> Thank you. This one responds. It's high tech, and it's not. It, it is using the encryption. Okay. So the first, where well, we're seeing the encryption. No, they all use oh. the encryption. No. This is Peugeot. Peugeot. Another French one. Citroen. Okay, I saw something. Yeah, it's it's high tech. It's uh, responding, and it's also using the encryption. What what manufacturer is that? What many? Citroën. Oh, wow. All the French ones then. It's the same as Peugeot. Yeah, it's uh, again the same. High tech, encryption. What are we looking at then? Opel again. This is again one of the bad ones. It's uh, just uh, sending its uh, ID out without any uh, inquiry. What was that? Audi? Audi. So yet another subsidiary of Volkswagen not using any encryption. Mm -hmm. Not responding, not high tech. That was a that was an access control card, right? Okay, I think we had that before. Uh -huh. Yeah, high tech encryption. Okay. It's a Renault. Yet another Renault, yeah. Okay, that's one of the bad ones. Uh, that's that's again one that simply sends its ID. You can watch my talk three years ago at this <laughs> Congress. OK, so just for the record, uh, we have all the French and oh. one German car manufacturer. Chances are General Motors uses it too, though. We know that Ford hasn't been using it um, since they use something worse. And apparently, Volkswagen and its subsidiaries use something yet worse than that, where there isn't even anything to be, to be broken. Um, okay, let's move ahead with was um, Henrik telling you how to sniff the data, how to interpret the data, and how to document a protocol nicely. And then we will get back to the crypto and how to actually break it. OK. Um, the first thing I did was uh, to Google for information. And I found two data sheets uh, that some manufacturer left on their website unprotected, which uh, describe, uh, the one describes Hitech 2, which we are looking at here and the other describes high-tech S. Apparently, there are three high-tech types, one, S, and two, where high-tech S seems to be an update of high-tech one, and high-tech two is uh, almost completely different. They are all using the same encryption, I think, at least from what I can gather from the data sheets. I had only high-tech two tags to play with, so that's what I will be uh, focusing on. The high-tech S is... Uh, uh, available in different memory sizes. This information is mostly all gathered from the data sheet. They have a simple ID-based uh, tag with only 32-bit uh, fixed memory. They have 265-bit tag and a 2048-bit tag. They are all uh, organized in the same way, different 